Hi, my name is Jonathan Charles. My call is the Vember Bravo 3 Italy. Probably more hams would say their favorite band is 40 meters than any other band. Certainly for me, that was the case. The 40 meter dipole was the only band I had as a novice back in 1966. So whether you're a DX contester or a recreational ham, 40 meters has always been a consistent, fun band for us. A wire made dipole always performs. But if you have a tower and you can't really put up a 40 meter beam, a rotatable dipole is a really great antenna. I used this dipole made by KLM for more than 30 years at the top of a simple 56 foot tower. But last year the plastic insulator in the center broke and since KLM no longer existed I couldn't replace it. Thankfully in talking to MFJ they suggested I use their high gain center insul insulator which they use on their two inch boom for their large tribanders. Since my mast was two inches and my old tubing for the antenna element was an inch and a quarter it, in outside diameter, it just worked perfectly. I was so impressed with the strength of installation in comparison to the plastic insulator I had used before, which broke. So I was back in business with the antenna I really liked. So when my brother-in-law Lowell, KK4PH, moved from Durham to the Shenandoah Valley, it gave me a chance to build this antenna once more and put on his 70-foot crank-up tower. He sits on a high knob at 1,500 feet with views of the countryside all around him. So we started with this high gain center insulator once more. It's probably not the smartest idea, idea to bolt a dipole onto the mast directly without a disconnect. But it works and it's simple and it's not going to break. So, and it only costs $20 for the kit from F MFJ. And then the bolt through the middle of the clamp will keep it from twisting. Okay. On the top we welded this brace together with angle iron just made of comes from the local hardware store. This is attached about 30 inches above the element to attach our strings to which take the strain off the long element. And we put a bolt through that as well to keep that from twisting. With that done, it is time to put the telescoping aluminum tubing together. I got all this tubing for this antenna from Texas Towers, which costs about $70 plus shipping. You add a little antioxidant grease in the joints, slide it together. There isn't anything better or more simple than cutting a slot in the joints and sliding it together and clamping it with a hose clamp. The other wonderful piece to make this work are the 7 8 outside diameter ins insulators with M which MFJ sells under the Cushcraft name. They're just perfect for combining two one-inch outside diameter uh, tubes together, aluminum tubes together. Finally, these offsets made by M squared make this antenna possible. Made out of solid aluminum, they are really strong and they have the holds already in place for their tubing. However, rather than using their tubing, I use this simple number six aluminum woven wire instead. I just needed to run a drill through the hole to make it just a tad bigger to allow the wire to go through and then those screws would tighten down on the wire to make it firm. There's nothing magical about the length of this linear lineal loading wire. My old antenna had lineal loading of about 18 feet with an overall length for the element of 23 feet on each side. This gives me a usable bandwidth of 150 kilohertz, less than two to one use without using a tuner. I thought if I cut that lineal loading back a bit to 13 feet at overall length, it might give me more bandwidth. And that's actually what happened. I used the Schedule 40 
pipe fittings to help tie these ropes on to support the weight of the element. They are strong and they're cheap and I hope they last a long time. With the elements all together, all we need to do is attach the ballum, which in this case is a Radio Works uh, 2K one-to-one -one ballum to attach the coax. I needed to extend the wire a bit using stiff number 12 wire so that there's no chance that that wire from the ballum to the element would touch the metal mast or bracket. With the coax in place, we're ready to raise it up and test it out. The first time I put this together up at my location in Pennsylvania, I raised it up about 20 feet on a temporary mast and I had an SWR reading of 1.3 to 1 at 7.250 megahertz. So I added one foot tubing at each end and sure enough this time down here at Lowell's my low SWR reading was 1.3 to 1 at 7100. I also was quite happy that we had the whole band at less than 2 to 1. So by shortening the linear loading and extending the element we did improve the working band width. So using wire and the brackets from your local hardware store and uh, electrical supply house, the MFJ high gain uh, for the center insulator, MFJ Cushcraft for insulators, M squared for the offsets, you can build this antenna for about $250 including a ballum. The really nice thing about this antenna is that it gets 40 meters up in the air and in the clear leaving the tower to support your longer wire antennas. So I hope this can give you some ideas. It's uh, certainly a wonderful antenna for us and I hope that uh, you can get a lot of good use out of it and we'll be looking for you on 40 meters.